Hi everyone and welcome back to Online Darts. Very special Zoom interview. We have the very recently crowned German darts champion, the African warrior himself, Devin Peterson. Devin, first of all, huge congratulations. We can tell by your smile that you're still loving every minute. Your first PDC title. Has it sunk in yet? I don't think it, it I don't think it has though. It, it just feels like it just feels like one continuous kind of movement in a sense. It's because ultimately I've I've just always been hard working, you know what I mean? So it, after winning that, it was great to have a trophy, it's great to do the speech and, and obviously see the social media activity. Um it's just everything is enhanced from what it previously was. If you're playing well and people message you and now it's just tenfold basically. But yeah, I think um, my excitement is for the next 501, which is going to happen at the Grand Prix. And, and I think that that's kind of keeping me, um, I don't want the, the, the winning uh, or winning the, the German Darts Championships to kind of distract me from everything. But obviously I've worked so hard towards it. So yeah, I did celebrate it a bit for the first 45 minutes with the kebab, but yeah, other than that, it's been <laughs> it's been steady on. Going to take you back to the opening um, when you played Gazi Price in the German Darts Masters, and you dodged a bullet. Everyone says that to win a title at some point, you need that little bit of luck. Was that your little bit of luck in that game when you missed match darts? Yeah, I think. I mean, if you look at the game, ultimately there he was he was phenomenal in the first in the opening four legs, taking a ton plus checkouts when I was set up on shots. Um, I just felt as though. It could either go one or two ways. It could either go, he's going to miss a, 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 an, an easy layup like that and take me out. Or I could just fight all the time and throw on 80s as much as I possibly can and try and win. And luckily for me, it was in my favor. But if I, if I like a lot of people were telling me as well, like he only had that one dart in, in the last five legs, which was when people say like, you dodge the bullet, like generally, I don't get that kind of luck. Do you know what I mean? People yeah. normally, when they get to such points, they, they, they check out. Um, yeah, and, and if that was, I'm hoping that there's more luck in the future, I guess. Going into the final, do you think the experience of the Autumn Tour, did you learn from that moment and going into this final, were you more prepared for winning your first title than perhaps you were back then? No doubt about it. I think me losing the Pro Tour was probably the best thing that could have happened to me because I was so motivated the next time I played um, to get everything right and fix it and just moving through the same kind of mental space that I was when I when I on my way, on my route to getting to the final. And even when I arrived in the final, I felt comfortable against Gezi and, and missing those matches. Out. And I know why I missed it. I, I spoke to Wayne immediately after that and I said exactly, I told him why and he conquered and he says that is exactly what happened. So this time around when I got to the final, I, I just when I got to the winning double, I said to myself, well, it's, this is, the, this is the, the things that I put in place to actually kind of activate. Because it's, it's, it's a different focus, different mentality that you have to have to actually get over the line. It's different from winning a game. And you only experience that when you're in that championship as a winning position, um, which I've not been ever um, up and until the last week. So, yeah, it was all new. But I'm, but I'm happy that um, I got over the line. And, and fortunate for me, it's... Um, it's it's been a long time coming, but but I also think that I'm happy that it's happened immediately after that final that I lost against Gezi because I think if it continued, you don't know what kind of a ripple effect it would have had and, and would it have been a thought. But even when I lost that final, I didn't feel as though it was going to be the last final that I was going to be in. Do you know what I mean? Because my form, I, I've, I've been playing really well, I'm scoring well. So I always felt like that, but I just... Also in the back of my mind, it's like you missed an opportunity there. And then, yeah, you needed to just put it um, to bed. And the next one came and I took it. Obviously, looking ahead, people are now talking about you in terms of you now have the game to win TV majors. Obviously, I know you read social media and I'm sure you would have read those comments. Does that just show how far you've come? They've talked about Devin Peterson being the best player in Africa. Now it's with Devin Peterson challenging for major titles. What does that mean to you? I think, like, to hear somebody else say it besides myself is quite different, I guess. Because, uh, I mean, you, you, you know, I mean, we've done so many interviews and I've always told you that I want to be, I'm going to be world champ. 
and um, people used to call me crazy they say yeah i don't have the game i don't have any of these things but a lot of people don't understand that the hard work that you put in in behind the scenes i mean i know exactly how good i am on the practice board so when i'm saying this is not saying it because I'm just saying it to, to sound kind of, there's a bravado towards it. No, it's, it's because I know exactly how hard I'm, I'm working and I know exactly the results I'm achieving. I just needed to transfer. But now hearing somebody else believing it, it makes it, it, it kind of con, it gives me more confidence in a sense. Um, my distraction, I won't, I won't be distracted by it. I think that um, ultimately I still want to focus and, and go and use the same structure and strategy that I have done um, for most of this year, approaching games um, and stay on that and, whether I, when I get to the final or whether I do get to a final and have the opportunity to win a major, I'm, I'm, I'm just hoping that I, I will be, oh, I, I know that I will be prepared because ultimately I've, I've been preparing for it for a long time. So, yeah, I think it's, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't hit me differently because I've always believed. Now I'm just making everybody else believe. Obviously, the rankings are not reflected of how well you're playing at the moment because of the, the way the two-year cycle works. But right now, do you think you're one of five, six players that are the best in the world for the best stuff right now? I think my, I, 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 have, a, I have a different take on, on, on potentially like being the best in the world. Or I think I'm, I'm probably one of those top five players who make the least amount of mistakes on a board now. Um, and I think that's the differentiating factor from elite players to really great players. Um, they make very little mistakes. And I've learned so many times playing against these top players like the likes of Michael, uh, Go and Price. Um, and you just think to yourself, um, like Peter Wright as well, where they, you may be through an 81, where if you converted a ton, you'd have two dots at a double, where they don't make that mistakes. So I've worked on my game ultimately just to make less mistakes. And that's the practice. Uh, yeah, so if I say I'm, I'm, I'm the best, I mean, that 128 players, they, they can, all, most of them can probably chuck in a 110 average at some point, but it's just that mistakes that they make in games, um, in, in different games, and they don't continue the consistency. And I've been there for a long time, and, and um, I know exactly, so I've got the T-shirt, I've worn the T-shirt, I, I was busy buying my shoes as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's I'm, I'm happy that I'm part of that elite, that that elite group of, of players that make less amount of mistakes. And, and I think that that's the reason why I've, I've achieved so much success um, in, the, in, in, in the recent times. Obviously, I want to touch on something that you said a minute ago as well, that you said you spoke to Wayne straight after the Pro Tour and you said you knew the mistakes you've made. Does that just show how you're evolving, that you go back to the coaches as well, and he's called himself on, on Twitter and that, and, and now obviously we know you put a lot of hard work into the technical side of your game and eradicating the bits that were holding you back does that just show that to every pro as well that look you can always work on this always something to be coached and worked on that no one is ever going to be perfect at this sport yeah i think i think that's the one the the one thing that keeps us all driving forward and, and, and just wanting to obviously achieve is because nobody will ever be perfect. I mean, uh, you'll, you'll try and make less mistakes or just be consistent, but you'll not throw six, nine darters. I mean, the, the person that will do that hasn't been born yet, or I, I don't think it will ever happen. Um, but yeah, like, you, like you're saying, like, and when I told you that, I, I, I missed him immediately after, and I messaged Colin because ultimately there's, there's things and factors that I've put into my game, obviously consulting with them as well. And they kind of helped me get a game that I can replicate. And if I revisit, I know exactly which mistake. It's, it's almost as if you, you're mapping out a journey, basically. But I just map out the 501. And my mapping out, I know exactly if I do, if, if something goes wrong, I know exactly what point went wrong. And I think that a lot of dark players don't have that because they, 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 they just purely work on their skill. And, and obviously, they, they know how. But having, a, having an opportunity to map it out definitely um, has given me a, a lot more success on the dartboard. Looking ahead, like you said, there's a very big televised tournament a week away now. Tough first round draw for yourself as well. But with those draws, if you get come through that in the first round, does that set you up for the rest of the tournament? Yeah, I think, I think a first round game is probably the hardest because nobody wants to lose a first round in, or nobody wants to lose any game. But especially a first round because you really you, you feel as though you haven't got into the tournament, you haven't, do you know what I mean, haven't moved with the tournament basically. But it's, it's the top 32 in the world that's going to be playing there and, and any draw there is going to be a hard draw. I mean, um, 
you got the likes of I think it was Gary that was a floater and you just yeah. do you know what I mean? If you were seed you didn't want Gary and, and look at um Ritaiski as well. I mean MVG's got Ritaiski and with the kind of form that MVG's in it, it it seems as though it's um it's an uphill battle. Previously, you wouldn't say that, but for MVG now, I mean, the, his performance. But I, I'm sure he'll be putting hard work in all this week and, and get his mental his mental space right. And because he loves majors as well, so yeah, I think I think if I look at if I look at how they performed and 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 in previous years at majors, I think the first round game, um, my first round game, both of us will be playing half. And obviously, Jose is part of, or Jose is part of the, the Trinidad group as well, uh, the same company that I'm sponsored by. And yeah, I think they, they're excited and in the anticipation of this um, clashing of the bulls, if you must call it that. But yeah, he's, he's been playing well. I mean, he's a great scorer, um, finishing. He's got some weird ways and he's, and he's really good at, at his doubles as well. So it's going to be a, a tough battle. But um, luckily for me, I'm, I'm in a form as well. So I think that it's just going to come down to who makes the least amount of mistakes and who can get off the, 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 the mark the quickest. Um, so yeah, it's a different tournament. And, and it's something that I've watched over the years with, with um, I was quite inquisitive about the mental space about that and, and kind of working my own way because it's not just your normal straight five or one where you go attack, attack. You need to be strategic with your free doubles as well. So yeah, I don't know if he's going to be thinking about that, but I will. Oh, that was my next question. Have you formalised your battle plan yet? Because I remember speaking to Rob Cross, especially on this, the first time he ever played on it, his exact words were, because I went back and listened to the interview in preparation for this, the Grand Prix frazzled my brain. Was his... I, I, can only, I can only imagine because ultimately my, my, most of our, all of our games, all of our tournaments are straight start. And uh, that then obviously means that it's the same battle plan, if you must call it that. But I have been thinking about the, the, the difference in approach, um, what to go where and when and timing of, of, of scoring and stuff like that. Um, uh, and targets at what, what specific dart to throw a target at. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, I have been kind of working, but I don't have it cemented as yet. So I've still got a few more days before I get there. And then, fingers crossed, I, I execute... Um, and all goes to plan. Early insight, are you favouring the tops to travel 20 or the du double 16 to 57 approach? Um, that's the thing though, it's, it's going to be, it's definitely going to be 32. Um, but the, the battle plan and, and I've seen and I've, and I've worked out the calculation as well. Like if it's, if you, if you're going correctly and you go second dot or third dot, what's your next, well, I mean, second dot, then the next score is, is, is massive. Do you know what I mean? So depending on where you go. So, yeah, there's, there's, I'm definitely going to go 32 um, unless I, I feel really in form and I might go tops as well. But 32 is definitely uh, number one for me so far. Looking past the Grand Prix, obviously, we've got the Grand Slam, Players' Championships, World Cup, and of course, the World Championships on the horizon. I was almost going to say the venue then, but we're not sure on that after Barry yesterday. So we'll just call it the World Championships um, for uh -huh. the moment. It's all this prep heading towards the showpiece or are you not looking that far ahead just yet? I, I feel as though every, every year the world champs is the one thing that I want. It's the one thing that I I'd always fight for. Um, it's not, it's not one thing to determine my season, but it's the one thing that I, I actually, I want to be known as a world champ. I want to have that world champ star. I, I, I want to just do it for, for Africa and have a world champion in darts. Um, I mean, I think, I think the ripple effect of it will be, monumental and, and and just it's not just for me it's it's for it's for for africa as well and south africa so yeah it'll all lead to that and and hopefully i can i can maintain my focus and and just with this busy schedule that we're gonna have now um yeah just just keep plodding away and making sure that i get sharper and sharper and by the time the world comes yeah be a, a kind of polished a polished product we know you're one that likes to look at rankings and set yourself goals obviously to jump the amount of places you'd like to in the rankings in one go is, is very tough. So realistically, come January the 1st, where would you like to be sat in this ranking? I think if, I'm, if I break through into the top 32, that's always the number one goal. Um, your, first, your first goal is obviously to stay in the top 64. The second goal is to make the top 32 and everything after that is cream. I mean, you look at the way in which, I mean, you, you talk about going into games and you look at um, titles and you realize that very quickly if you become successful in these back-end majors 
you could you could end up number one, not what number one, but in the top three, four of the of the of the of the order of merit very quickly. So yeah, I think um, I'll I'll focus mainly on on just polishing up and 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 making sure that I hopefully break into the top thirty-two. Outside dream, the form you're in right now, it comes up this time every year. You know where I'm going with this by that smirk. Have you thought about the Premier League yet and the, the possibility of the African Warrior gracing the biggest roadshow in darts for 16 weeks? Because right now, is there 10 players better than you that deserve a spot? Um, the Premier League is always... I've, I've Previously, I've, I've always had the sentiment about the Premier League being an, a, an amazing opportunity for, for marketing as a profile or your profile as a player. Um, my 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 full goal is is ultimately just to become a world champ. Um, the Premier League and all of those things will take care of itself. If I get the invite, great. If I don't, I mean, it's it's up to 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 those people. But for now, I, if I focus on me, uh, the Premier League takes care of itself. I guess. I like that because we were on the live lounge last night. We were talking about potential Premier League candidates, and and I said it's the Premier League. There's a different set of boxes you need to tick than just being. A good dark player. Do we of agree course, with yeah. that? One hundred percent. I mean, it's not. It's not like a lot of people look at rankings straight away and they go, "Oh, he's supposed to be because he's at this rank and that rank and all of those things." They don't understand that it's a showcase. It's it's literally box office. It's your feature film, basically, of of the the normal darts that you get to see. So um, the r- different rules apply, and I mean, the success of the the Premier League is, is testament to that. And brilliant. I mean, the PDC, Barry Hearn and Sky obviously put on an amazing show. And they, the, the players that they have there as well. I mean, last year was probably one of the best uh, Premier Leagues that we would have had performance-wise. Um, it's just a pity that we obviously never had the crowds. But, I mean, the, the opening nights were fantastic. And I don't think that that, that will stop um, for the next 100 years. So, yeah, I think um, if, I'm, if, I'm, if we were to look that far ahead and I maintain my, 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 my composure and focus and um, the momentum that I have in the form, um, yeah, I can't see why not. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put more, all my eggs in a basket and make it about the Premier League because I'm sure they're making it about the world. I want to touch on what this has done back home as well. Have you had many messages from back home in South Africa? And obviously, we all know you're the best African player that's ever lived. Fact speak for himself. But you actually winning this title, what does that do for darts back home as well now? It's massive. I've, it's like uh, I still haven't gone through all the messages, and I, and what we in day, nearly day two now, and I'm still going through messages and trying to respond to everybody. So if you're watching this and I haven't responded, please understand that I am trying. Um, but uh, like every news um, channel in in the having interviews in South Africa, um, I'm on the front page of most of the, uh, like some of the newspapers there, um, having stories and so on and so forth. So I think that the, it's it's just. Because of um, the likes of Brad Binder as well, winning, winning the MotoGP, I think it was, uh, which is East South African and, and, and it's, it's massive for our country. Once we have, I mean, we had Wade van Niekerk as well when he broke the record. Um, you have these South Africans coming through and once you see a South African or an African come through, it automatically creates a resurgence in South Africa where there's a whole host of it takes it literally takes that sport and elevates it and you just see it become like you'll see more people kind of um come through the doors of those sporting categories and i hope it's exactly the same for for south africa um and to be represented on the pdc pro tour also you winning this does this rekindle the hope and the passion that we could see a world series event hitting south africa again in the near future that is a massive i i can't tell you how much I've been thinking about that after winning because I was just thinking if that is the reason like me winning this and that is the the end product of it it will blow my mind completely and my heart will fill up with with joy because I think though that's what South Africa currently needs to kind of highlight the sport in South Africa or Africa I think we on the on the edge of kind of, I think now me winning and all this attention, like all the, 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 the media hype in South Africa without me even being there has now put the darts on the map properly. Because before I used to get like a little slot and I'll just show a story, I haven't done this and that's it. But uh, yesterday I was um, on every headline on the news on every hour. So literally when you switch on your TVs, my face, you're going to see, you know what I mean? So 
and luckily I have a pretty face, so people <laughs> wouldn't too upset. <laughs> but but yeah, I I, I hope that it, it, it rekindles that and it and it allows us to showcase our talent that we have in Africa and South Africa. Evan, it's a pleasure as always. I know you've got plenty of media to do and plenty of practice to do before the World Grand Prix, mate. Thank you very much for taking time out to speak to us here at Online Darts as always, buddy. We massively appreciate it. I always enjoy your, your company and, and your interviews, mate. So I appreciate it. Thanks a lot for having me.